Welcome back to Dragonfall. We survived the ambush we were up against. I don't think there's anything to loot out here, but I'm just double checking. All right, looks like nothing. So getting in the van after a rendezvous with a bunch of racists. Sure seems like fun. The courtyard of the Humanus compound is strangely quiet. The only activity that you notice is the clatter of the mechanized gates as they rumble shut behind the vans. The bulldogs roll to a stop. You step outside along you step out alongside Maxim and the rest of the smugglers. There are crates here. A lot of crates. All scattered in various stages of disorganization. It looks as though your delivery is just one of many that this branch of Humanus has received. The smugglers unload the cargo from their vans with practiced efficiency. The whole operation feels polished and professional, but you can tell that Maxim is nervous. You can see it in his eyes. The smugglers finish unloading the last of the crates, then take up positions around the van. Minutes pass. Nobody comes to meet you. No welcoming party. Maxim shakes his head. This isn't a good sign. It's almost as if they didn't expect us to make it here. He nods. My thoughts exactly. This puts us in a bad spot, Alice. I'm not sure what our next step is. Your next step is to sit out here. Mine is to go inside. I've got a job to do. His eyes widen. You're not hired muscle at all, are you? You're a shadow runner here on a job. Um, that's right, but there's no reason why I can't help you out while I'm doing it. You're serious, aren't you? You're really going in there. He takes a step back. Well, be my guest. I won't get in your way. When you make it back, if you make it back, we'll be out here waiting for you. There's a warning label plastered onto the side of this container. Judging by the amount of small print on the label, whatever's being stored in here is extremely bad news. Take a closer look at the label. Warning. Highly dangerous chemical agent. Do not take internally. Avoid contact with skin, eyes, mouth, and clothing. Increases aggression and reduces impulse control when inhaled. Avoid breathing fumes or vapor. Important. Do not proceed unless material safety data sheet has been read and understood. Well, that doesn't sound like any kind of good time. Um, all right, well, I guess we're going inside. It's bad, not, uh, bad an idea as that seems. You're about to transition to a new location. Yep. Here we go. The Humanist compound smells like a locker room and it and doesn't look much better. Calling the building run down would be an understatement. Paint is peeling off the cheap duraplast walls and the tiles on the floor are mired with decades worth of grime. It's an old, ugly place, perfectly suited to the old, ugly ideology being practiced here. You enter the compound. The information that Samuel Beckenbauer sent you here to find lies somewhere ahead. Well, that's never a good sign. Rats scurrying away. Why is the security camera labeled?
Why are all these things labeled? This is weird. I can't interact with it. Do I go straight for that door or do I try and go, well, let's try and go through here instead first. This console consists of a text entry field and a virtual keypad. Written along the top of the screen is an imposing, in an imposing font is the word armory. Well, I guess we'll have to come back to that. I'm surprised nobody's coming to greet us. You know, in whatever form that takes. There's a handwritten note sitting on the table. Hey, Capel, you come highly recommended. Any anyone who did what you did to those elves will go far around here. You can hit the kitchen anytime, but otherwise stay close unless otherwise told. Your locker code is 2619 locker three. Well, now we know a locker code, whatever that does for us. Uh, that's not good. Let's come back to this. Let's see, we've got a conduit here. If we had anybody with a... with a drone. Large red six. Hold on. Number three, did they say? The locker opens with a click. There is a note inside. Recruit Capel. Your enthusiasm at the rally was more than commendable. Those trog bastards really got what was coming to them. Volker wants to see you right away. His personal code is pride. Wow. <laughs> Not subtle. Share this with no one. Owen. Command us office door code. All right, well. I don't suppose they're all 2619, are they? Huh. Well, maybe we come back for the others. Um, no? Okay, I didn't think so. Just checking. I think this is probably about to go poorly. We'll find out what we're going to save before we do. This turret is powered down. Huh, okay. Let's not go through that door yet, actually. Let's see what's in here. Humanus Terminal. The Humanus Poly Club logo fills the majority of the screen on this terminal. A welcome message written in cartoonishly aggressive font appears below. Please log in to begin. Get the Decker to hack the terminal. Operations account information downloaded. You gain access to a list of humans, Humanus safe houses worth some new yen on the right hands. All right.
Uh, do it again. A list of the newest batch of Humanist recruits scrolls onto the screen. All right, here's the latest group of recruits. Some of them are already showing signs of promise. All right, so we've got a list of them based on their numbers. Make sure they get assigned to their bunks in alphabetical order this time. Uh, I kept losing track of who was in the last batch. As always, I'm changing the code to my office. The new code is pride. Okay. You download a file containing the re recruit's numeric code, key codes along with the door code to your PDA. Oh, I have all their access codes? Hold on. Oh, hey, that's handy. Uh, well, we're gonna deal with that in a second. After a few minutes of sifting through account sheets, you find what you're looking for, a complete donor list for the, the Berlin chapter of Humanis. You download the list to your PDA. There are quite a few well-known names on here, including a billionaire philanthropist and a children's tridio show host. Well, that is a bummer, isn't it? The file cabinet is crammed full of Humanis propaganda. Read the first pamphlet. Human, you work hard, you play fair, and still you can't you can't get ahead. But have you ever wondered why? The answer is simple. The elf is using the orc and the troll as muscle against you. Think about it. When you turn on your tridio after a hard day's work, what who do you see? The pampered elf, basking in the lap of luxury, squandering the money that you could be using to feed your children. When you walk through a dark alley on your way home from the market, what do you fear? The mongrel orc and the savage troll, lying in wait to rob you of your hard-earned gains. The elf, the orc, the troll, all are parasites leeching away at your prosperity and happiness. It's time to wake up and do something about it. So what are you going to do, human? Support the Humanus Pully Club. Together we will show pride in what we are and defend ourselves from the jackals at our door. Human, humanus forever. I mean, this is obviously very unsubtle. It's also kind of extra bizarre because, like, it's it's somewhat consistent with the metaphor. But given that, um, basically, as far as I understand it, all of the metahumans are supposed to be variant humanity. Like, basically divergent evolution through external forces that they're not really different species so to think so, so to speak like well actually i don't know what the like um genetic compatibility is between the various races but basically since they're all you know as of uh you know not that long ago supposedly um well, actually, let me look this up. Uh, let me just pull up. Let's see. Describe either humans and other metatypes as a single group. Refer to elves, dwarves, and orcs and trolls. Discovered from humus, uh, from Homo sapiens sapiens. Increasingly reclaimed in universe for the former definition. This article deals with them primarily in the latter sense subspecies of homo sapiens to be emerging following the return of magic in 2011 and generally have been the targets of racism throughout their existence. Yeah. Okay. So this particular article isn't delving into, this is just off the Shadowrun wiki. I could actually pull out my books at some point, but um, yeah. So, well, it, it is interesting as well because they specifically call out what trolls, orcs and, elves but there's also we know of the dwarves um and uh i guess they're not counting um there's also you know other other types of metahumans there's the pixies um and there's the dragons and drakes or, or like great dragons regular dragons and drakes i think which I don't know if they're technically considered to be metahumans or they're a separate thing. Anyway. Um, 
But yeah, the the like racism as a content like a, a contemporary development is sort of fascinating. Obviously, it keys into um, some sort of inherent tendencies in humanity to try and other those that are not understood or different or per well perceived to be different so on and so forth. The metaphor here and the writing is very heavy handed in terms of reflecting um, modern political and social discourse around immigration and, and modern racism as awful as it is to use such a phrase. It's not very subtle, but it is, you know, certainly relevant. Second pamphlet. Human, they say you can't get a job because of the economy, but you know the real reason. Metahumans. Man, I, I mean, this is just the American right talking about, you know, uh, Central and South American immigrants. It's like you could just replace metahumans with Mexicans or whatever blanket term the, you know, ignorant are using to refer to people searching for a better life. Anyway, um, trying to, not to get too political on, on this channel in general, but it's sort of unavoidable. Uh, it's very, not quite ham-fisted, but, you know, it's obvious. The elf with his pretty boy... <laughs> Okay, this is kind of funny. Um, if only because in in like in real world uh, discourse, you sometimes see some of these like weird self owns where they're like <laughs> the elf with his pretty boy looks. Oh, you sure showed him. <laughs> uh, uh, why are they so pretty? I don't like it. <sighs> Makes me uncomfortable, so I'm gonna lash out. Uh, that shit makes me laugh. All right, uh, it'd be a lot funnier if it wasn't so sad and awful. The elf with his pretty boy looks takes the high-paid corporate desk job, rises to the top, and blocks the top positions forever, never aging, never retiring. The orc is willing to work for table scraps, driving the cost of labor down and depriving you of a decent wage. The troll takes all of the manual labor jobs. That's right. Not even the sweat of your own brow can earn you a living these days. Join Humanus and turn the tide on economic repression. Humanus forever. Third pamphlet. Human. Oh, here we go. Ever wonder why dwarf shops are all family run? Free labor. Oh, shit. Is this, is this some shitty Jewish metaphor? Uh... Whose businesses suffer? You guessed it. We, the human humans, wind up paying and reduce sales and lost wages. Every day, another dwarf-run store opens. And every time that happens, more dwarves flock to our neighborhoods, driving good, honest human business out. They say it's for community. They say it's for protection. But why can't they keep to their own neighborhoods? What are they hiding? Stand up for your people. Stand up for what's right. Join the Humanist Pulley Club. Humanist forever. Oh, Jesus, this stuff is like as as kind of badly, deliberately badly written as it is. It is rough to read because like it is so reflective of human history, the history of the 19th and 20th and now the 21st for some reason century. Just the the rhetoric around oh, man. If you ever want to, um, a fascinating but really, really depressing read, um, there's some uh, learning the, like, the background of, like, European anti-Semitism in the 19th century is, uh, well, and long before that as well, um, is sort of fascinating. The, the, uh, the evolution of that particular branch of racism um, and the rise of the Third Reich as a um, basically a, an offshoot 
of a very long growing sentiment around just some weird shit. Um, fascinating to read about, terrifying to just man's inhumanity to man knows no bounds sometimes. Um, but those who forget the past or doomed to repeat it, I recommend everybody learn all the depressing things so that, you know, they can be informed. Anyway, this took a turn. All right, let's close the filing cabinet. Um, let's take a look in this room. I assume that is probably the door with the code. Uh, do we have anything else in here? Not really. So... Let's pop these doors and then we'll go open the foot lockers. Assuming nothing ambushes us. It is really weird that these security cameras are are here. Is there, is there another? There's a thing there. Come on. No. I wish these would autofill, but I think I've discussed that. But oh no, is it going to close it as well? They said alphabetical order, right? Okay, so this is 2114. Oh, that's really infuriating. Empty. Um. 3706 Nitro uh, 1409 Find a note. Alexander, you have seemed less than enthusiastic in our education sessions. Please understand that we are not a shelter. We are a factory. Factory that refines the dross of society, people like you, into strong, pure warriors for humanity. In the future, see to it that you are on time and well rested. If you drop the ball again, we are going to have to, a little talk about your future in this organization. Volker Stahl. Dietrich snatches the note out of your hands. I knew it. I knew that Alex wouldn't buy into their bullshit. He reads the note over again, his lips moving with the syllables. Come on, boss, he's still here somewhere. There's still time. All right. Uh, Klein 4176. Strewn, uh, strewn in among a pile of dirty clothes, you find a cred stick. 286 new yen. All right. And then the last one... 1106. Find a note. Friedrich, I am pleased with how well you are doing. To show my growing trust in you, I am giving you a new assignment in addition to your trainee duties. Beginning tomorrow, I'd like you to tidy the armory. <laughs> the access code is purity. See that you don't forget it. Tomorrow evening, I will expect to see a full inventory of the weapons in our arsenal by nightfall. With it, you will deliver to me, deliver me a requisition order for the weapon of your choosing. Your pick, my boy. I leave it up to you. Congratulations, Frederick. The honor is this honor is well deserved. All right. Well, let's go get these fuckheads. Uh, steal their, steal their weapons. Hope there's no one in here. Ah, oh, there's another security camera. Oh, hello, turret. Um, we'll take that. And 
Yeah, hopefully we won't have to res multiple people. Oh, um... Well... I'll send that to the stash as well. Wish I could hand it off to someone else, but... Mossberg CMDT... Um, I don't have a data jack, so send it to the stash. Box of grenades. Um, flash grenade. I'll just send it to the stash. I think that's fine. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. All right. All right. That looks like that's it. Still shocked that the security cameras haven't indicated we're about to get into combat at any point, but I don't know. The whole thing seems shockingly abandoned. I don't know where the rest of the kids are. Why is there a chair here? This isn't a thing. It looks like it's hiding something. Anyway, all right. We're going to cut the episode, and when we come back, we're going to use the code PRIDE to get through this door. See you guys then.